Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. But today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis update of commodities, work our way through the dollar, yields, precious metals, and commodities and ETFs that this guy follows. Uh, if you need any help with anything, check out finding-value.com. Uh, we still have a discount going on called Discount if you want to use it. And that's where I go over individual companies, sectors, and uh, stuff that I use for the commodity bull market in terms of investments. You get to see what I'm doing. So uh, let's dive in here. Let's see what's going on today. And I'll give you my financial opinions. So we've got the DXY behind me. Uh, we had a big blowout candlestick to the downside here that pump that basically punched us out of that channel. We came on down and this is in my opinion probably a return move back to the to the breakout trend line channel. Uh, so I still think it's possible to go lower in the DXY and really what that's going to take is lower yields. And I don't think this is going to last forever, um, but it will it'll be for a short period of time. And kind of what this looks like is almost like, you know, a flag pattern where this could go back lower uh, at some point. And that that's basically saying that we are going to have a slowdown in the market and that we are in the we are actively in that slowdown uh, with yields coming back down. Uh, will that necessarily be right? Difficult to say. Uh, that's what I think could potentially occur. Um, we've got a little bit larger selling candlestick here. We've got two small up candlesticks right on resistance. Uh, so we could blow out to the downside in the short term for a little while. That's kind of what my best guess is. Um, I don't make any sort of short term. Uh, I don't trade the short term. Uh, I just watch it and view it. Because the short term just doesn't have the probability of success that taking long term positions do in a undervalued state and then riding them for a long period, your risk reward is so much better doing that. But that's kind of what I see in the short term here. Uh, the two year yield, again, we've got lots of downside selling pressure uh, in that circle here. You can see all the big red candlesticks. Hit, hit, comes back up, hit. It's like this thing is coming up for air, but it can't. It just gets smoked to the downside. Now, is this the reversal candlestick that we are looking for for a move higher? And, you know, it's difficult to say because the momentum is definitely to the downside. Um, I think in the short, short term, we could maybe get eke out a little bit more upside uh, to up here, maybe. But, Again, when it gets to these situations where you get a little bit of short-term buying pressure there, but the overall momentum is lower, uh, I just go with the overall momentum, which, which means um, it's lower until this proves otherwise. So yields are still in a downtrend in the short term until we get big buying pressure to push us out of this uh, downward kind of pattern, megaphone pattern. TNX, which is the 10 year, uh, it's right on resistance. And we'll see if this thing holds because the closing price is like right where the line is. So we're right on that cusp of potentially breaking a downtrend line in the 10 year. Uh, and we'll see if we get more clarity tomorrow. Uh, but today we were, we're basically flat today, and the 30 year was flat. The 30 year is also underneath uh, resistance. So we punched out below resistance. A lot of times they come up, tag it, and then they turn back lower. So again, in the short term, I don't think it's as clear which direction we're going to go. Uh, but if I were to make a guess based off of the conflicting candlesticks that I see, uh, I still think that there's downside left in yields in the short, short term. Uh, just because momentum is to the downside. And I don't see big buying pressure candlesticks coming in outside of the two-year yield having this guy having a big candlestick there. Um, and that's kind of what I'm gauging. I'm gauging the forcefulness of the buyers versus the forcefulness of the sellers. Uh, that's what I'm trying to gauge. And we had a massive selling pressure move 
And then you look for what the bounce will look like. If the bounce isn't as big as the selling pressure move, that generally wants to roll over uh, and head lower. Uh, a lot of the times if we're putting in bottoms, they do these trampoline jumps multiple times. And then it, and then it goes. Uh, to the upside, and it and it chooses a direction. Um, looking at TYX TNX ratio, we were basically sideways, 0.26%. It looks like it wants to go on up, uh, which means yields would fall, generally speaking, uh, and that's generally good for precious metals. But precious metals does not like did not like today. We were down a little bit today. Uh, bond prices. We're basically pulling back to support, which makes me think that we could go higher in prices, which means lower yields. Uh, so I'm trying to piece this all together. Bond prices look good to continue higher, which then makes me think that yields want to go lower. Uh, but if you take a longer term approach on this, we are still at a longer term resistance line. We have pretty strong selling pressure, and this very well could roll over or go sideways for a good bit. So uh, it's difficult when you've got different time frames telling you kind of different things. Uh, so what I do is it's like, you know what? I need to wait and get more data, and we need to see how the markets trade. Um, on the big, long-term, big-picture view, if I were to step way back out, uh, I think that bond prices are going to remain low. I don't think we're going back up here. So whatever move we have, I think it's going to be in a short-term move, and then I think it's going to turn and go back lower eventually. That is what my best estimate would be on a longer-term basis. Uh, in the short term, though, I could it could go either direction here um, because we do have some strong buying power, but yet the momentum is still to the downside. Looking at gold, gold. We got that big reversal uh, candlestick here, uh, and we haven't really bounced from that reversal yet. We are still uh, heading lower with momentum. So that momentum is still continuing, and we have not turned that around yet. We are to an area where we have a lot of uh, support resistance. So that's the area there. You can see all the trading here. Um, we're coming into that support area, and we'll see if that support area holds. We also have a really strong support area through here, which is in that 1940, 1920 to 1960 range uh, is where we've got really strong support. Silver, uh, we're back to that trend line. We'll see if that trend line holds. Uh, we're at $23.14 is what I'm seeing. We did not punch through the trend line yet. We got close. We tasted it a little bit here but we got punched lower back into uh, the pattern. Now that doesn't mean the pattern is not valid. It just means we might go sideways for a little longer. I still think we are going to the promised land way higher. Uh, that's where I think we're still going. Platinum down a teeny bit. <clears throat> it, looks, it looks good. We've broken out of this trend line and it's holding above the trend line. Uh, we could go down a little bit before heading higher. That's what this these smaller looking candlesticks, the opening and closing prices contracting in the wicks at the top uh, generally means we could go a little bit lower in the short term. Uh, think of it as kind of like we, we squeezed up into the corner here and then we punched lower. Uh, we could have a little bit more downside in the short, short term. Uh, it may only be a day though. I'm, I'm saying real short term. We might gap lower and then come back up. You don't know. Uh, palladium looks like it's trying to put in a bottom to me. That's what I'm seeing. And I think we are going to come back uh, and go back and forth above this long-term su support level here. So we're trying to put in a bottom here. Um, I think we'll bounce for a little bit. And that might, that might be for six months or longer or maybe even a year. But I think it's trying to put in a, a bottom on top of the other breakout that we had in Palladium. Uh, XAU to gold ratio still looks good. We're holding on above the trend line here. Uh, so that, at least in the short term, we're holding on. And today, we saw gold and silver mining companies outperform the metal itself a little bit, even though uh, gold was lower. So the mining companies were lower, less lower than gold itself. We've got the CRB index 
Uh, again, I think it's going to take some time here. This is a large selling pressure move. Uh, we could even head lower in the short term. Uh, to me, it looks like people are scared, like there's there's fear in the market. And I kind of feel like that's what the case is. And maybe we still have a little bit further to go to the downside before uh, turning higher. Maybe we go back to 240-ish area in the CRB index. Uh, this is the, the fractal overlay. And you can see that we did have a kind of a big move lower before we moved on up. And I think that's what we're getting now before the move on up. Uh, CRB to S&P 500, a uh, little bit of underperformance here. Uh, and again, there's that fractal that I overlaid of last bull market. And you can see it's it's very similar. Uh, and maybe we come back a little bit further um, to get people to basically disbelieve the move in commodities. Uh, but I think everything's still intact. I mean, look at this. This thing looks really close. We've got kind of the squiggles there um, that occurred. Uh, we have the, the the peak, the hump, and then this is kind of that last hump that we're getting. Uh, and we could go a hair lower perhaps, but I think we're getting close to a potential bottom. Maybe it's next year. Maybe we start it in January, February, whenever it is. I don't want to try to make predictions. Uh, I think predictions are basically useless. What we want to know is, and what we want to gather from this is, um, I think this is what is basically going to occur something on the lines of this uh, it's a three wave move and we've gone through this first first wave second wave third it goes through like a tumultu tumultuous fourth wave and then a fifth uh, that's this fractal here uh, that's where i grabbed it from is this guy there and i just stretched it out a little bit to overlay it and that's kind of what I see. But we're at a very cheap level down here. And that's the opportunity. The opportunity is that commodities are cheap in relationship to the stock market. Uh, and that is where you want to purchase is in this low area down here where it kind of comes up. It'll kind of do like an inverted head and shoulders. Something on the lines of that uh, is possible. And then we break to the upside and get moving. GDX, uh, we are slightly lower. But we're right on support. We've got GDXJ, which has bounced off that trend line that's above us. Uh, much like the price of silver, it looks almost identical to the price of silver here. GDXJ does. And SILJ also trying to break out, but it didn't quite successfully do it. On the other hand, it's not dropping like a rock either. Dropping like a rock? Drop what song is that? It <laughs> just popped in my head. Uh, but we've come back and it looks good, like it wants to go higher. Look at all these little selling pressure days. And then we've got the big green army. So SILJ, to me, uh, looks fantastic. And it looks like it's coming right back to support, like it wants to try to break out again. And we'll see uh, if that if it's successful at doing that. Uh, crude oil moving basically sideways today, up 0.25%. Um, but I still think this needs to, I think it needs to like bottom out. I, I think. We'll get some pattern there. That's basically an inverted head and shoulders that I just drew. Um, but I do think we're probably going to bounce around here. And it's not out of the, the realm to get down to $67, $66. Um, just by looking at the selling pressure and then this bounce, I think it could do something like that. Uh, this is my guess. So um, we've broken the trend line here. Yep, we've come back down. It does look like there's maybe a little bit, it's got to work off this downside momentum and uh, move sideways. So uh, that's what I see in crude oil. TTF gas, definitely lower today, 5.5% lower. Um, so we had this basing pattern. We came out and then we're coming back into it. Doesn't mean it's completely broken, but uh, I wouldn't say things look great either. Uh, and that gas, Henry Hub, does look like it's trying to put in a bottom here. Lots of selling pressure. It was quite heavy and it, it feels like a washout move and it reversed towards the end of the day. You can see kind of the selling pressure and then it came back up towards the end of the day. We'll see if that sticks tomorrow, the momentum, and if we can actually try to get a bounce. But there's a lot of momentum to the downside. Uh, it may need to work its way sideways uh, and kind of base out if it's going to try to turn. Uh, XOP, yeah, you know me. Again, we're still underneath that neckline. We are in a shoulder, head, shoulders, an inverted head and shoulders. We've been pulling back from the neckline in the short term. It 
it looks like to me that there could be further downside in the short term. So uh, the reason, the way I'm gauging that is the selling pressure and the bounce. There's no bounce here. It's just a little green candlestick. There's big red candlesticks selling off. So I still think there could be potential downside left in XOP until I start to see buying pressure in the candlesticks. Um, OIH, which is the energy service companies, again, a small sideways day. I don't see the bounce yet. I think there's more sideways to slightly lower action in this uh, for a bottoming pattern to occur. We've got Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. That still looks good. Uh, think of that as a flag pattern that's potentially ready to break out. Um, I still think everything looks good in the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. Uh, what we're seeing is you see big buying pressure, consolidation, big buying pressure, consolidation. And that's kind of what I'm seeing uh, in the chart until I see reversal candlesticks. Um, URA still holding on. So that's also looking good, down 0.17%. Uh, but it still looks good. We're still on top of support and everything looks all right there. We've got URNM, which is it's the same chart as that as well. And we're just moving sideways above the support level. And it still looks good to go higher until I see something different. Uh, URNJ is another one that looks good. It's the same chart as URNM and URA. Uh, we've got TAN, which is also moving sideways. I'm not as confident in TAN as TAN is more subject to interest rates and it's going to be highly dependent on interest rates, but these guys are not making money. So again, we'll see where this thing heads and it looks like it's trying to break to the upside. Uh, COPX, we are moving sideways. I think this still looks good. Bullish engulfing there, big green candlestick, not much selling pressure. Uh, for that there. Uh, coming on down to lithium. Uh, lithium is, it looks like it's trying to put in a bottom. It doesn't look too bad. We've got a bullish engulfing here. Uh, there's not much selling pressure, which is always a good sign. Um, and we're, we're starting to reach towards this potential, I'll call it support zone. Is it possible that this thing gets one last washout sale? It definitely is. We've got downside momentum. It's trying to turn, uh, but does it have the force and the power to get actually movement to the upside? That's what we're looking for. Uh, it looks good to try to do that. We'll see. We've got a broken downtrend line. We've got a bullish engulfing. So let's let's see the buyer step in here and do it. Uh, REMX, a little bit of selling pressure today. We have another bullish engulfing there, a broken downtrend line. You take a longer term view though, uh, there is still downside momentum here, and that very well could work its way lower because the bounce hasn't occurred yet. So we're waiting for buying pressure to come in and show us that the buyers uh, are there and they're putting in some power behind it. Uh, S&P 500 continues to work its way higher. Um, there it is at 4,622. We are still underneath uh, this trend line. Uh, and, and to me, we got to punch through all this. I mean, that's for me to get bullish again. Uh, but this could very well be a double top as well, where we we come on up and then we roll back over. Uh, that's kind of what I see. Uh, NASDAQ is in the same boat. You've got this kind of top here, and I think this is putting in uh, what we consider to be the Batman pattern, potentially. Uh, and that's where it could roll over again. So I know we're going up in the short term, and I'm sure people think that's bullish, but I, I think the valuations make this incredibly risky uh, given the increased uh, interest rates as well makes, makes this a very difficult sale for me to be bullish on. I'll just say that. Uh, KRE, it's working its way on up. Not much selling pressure yet. I still think we can potentially go higher for KRE. Uh, emerging markets looks good. It looks like this is right at support. And again, we need the dollar to drop for this to rip. Uh, it'll come. Just give it time. Uh, weaker yields, dollar drops, emerging markets higher. Um, do we still have more time where emerging markets may stay lower for longer and we keep yields higher for longer? It's possible that we stay down here for six months to a year. Uh, it is very much possible. But the valuations down here are incredibly good for emerging markets. Uh, XHB uh, continuing higher, 0.26 up. Uh, it still looks good to go up. 
Uh, no reversal candlesticks, nothing occurring there. And we are basically at all time highs here. We've got Mu that looks like it's trying to put in a bottom. Uh, we are starting to peek its head, a turtle heading out of a uh, downtrend line. We also have bullish engulfing there, that candlestick, which means it generally works its way on higher. So the agribusiness ETF looks good to go higher. Uh, and so does a lot of the soft commodities. Uh, copper, I think copper looks good. We are sitting on top of the trend line. And we have a bullish engulfing here. So we've got another one here. Uh, that's good. And we've got big green candlesticks coming on up. And I think we're just maybe going to do a retest. Maybe it's a falling wedge or whatever the heck it wants to put in there. Uh, but it looks good sitting on top of support. Uh, iron ore still looking good. Just two small little candlesticks next to, next to each other. Uh, I think the trend is undeniably higher in iron ore. Uh, aluminum selling off a little bit. Uh, we are coming back down and the momentum still to the downside. And I got to see some reversal candlestick before I get super bullish on aluminum in the short term. Uh, Baltic dry index pulling back just a teeny bit. Uh, there it is coming on back. Let's go to the weeklies. So that's the weeklies. Uh, but again, I think we're still going to go higher uh, over time. This is a big falling wedge. The projected move is up around 4,700. Um, we had a little reversal candlestick here. Uh, the past week, and we'll see if we can get move into the upside at some point. Uh, Newcastle Coal, I think this is basing out. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity here in coal uh, sitting on top of uh, this base. And then we've got Bitcoin get selling off today, uh, down 6%. We do have a little wick at the bottom. It wasn't total disaster, but uh, big selling pressure today in Bitcoin and even in Ethereum down 6%. We're still above support, though. Uh, and I think it's it's not, we'll see if there's follow through tomorrow. That's what I'll say. Let's see if there's follow through tomorrow. Uh, if there's not much follow through, uh, I think it could just be a big, big puke day, so to speak. But uh, that's what I'm seeing in the charts today, guys. Uh, give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the website if you guys like this type of analysis. I don't do this on the website. It's, that's more individual companies looking at it, stuff from the long term finding where the value is in the market, and then taking long-term positions in companies that I think are very cheap with good upside potential. But uh, that's what I've got for today, guys. Uh, hopefully you guys are hanging in there. Uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.